G'day frothers. So doing something a little silly today. Uh, I figured I would try and uh, do some pull testing using uh, kneadable epoxy. Uh, so this one is Selly's Knead It. It's just a multi-purpose kind of thing. And you know, no real reason for this. Uh, I'm not gonna recommend you do it. Uh, but basically every time I use this sort of stuff, I wonder, could you use this to actually anchor some climbing bolts? I have no idea what kind of situation you would want to do that in. Maybe an emergency, you know, maybe maybe you're up somewhere remote, soft rock, and you just have a bit of this, two bolts. I honestly can't think of a realistic situation where you would uh, use this stuff uh, for this purpose. But look, every time I use it, I wonder, would you be able to actually use this to actually fasten a bolt. So anyway, I'm gonna find out right now. Got a piece of granite here, uh, but I think I'll start with the concrete because I've already got a bunch of data from this exact concrete. Uh, and I'm gonna use these little studs here. So that is M8, uh, it's 304 stainless, but these are what I use for all my glue testing. Not much of that is published yet, but go check out this video uh, if you want a taste of that. So I've already got a standardized way of testing uh, different adhesives. And look, this is technically not an adhesive. I don't even know if it's gonna go in the hole, but hey, let's give it a shot. So this block has already been used for a bit of epoxy testing. Got a spot right there. I'm not expecting it to be good as the epoxies that came out of here. So anyway, we'll see. Okay, so I've got a 10 millimeter hollow bit, so dustless hole. Uh, it's marked to 60 millimeters, just like all the others. So this is, yeah, my standard epoxy testing uh, situation. And this overly large rotary hammer, you don't need anything near this big if you're gonna be installing like little climbing bolts, but I got this recently, I just wanna use it. And I just have all this attached to my little vacuum. Okay, bit of dust left. Although this is a wire brush, so it's probably a little aggressive. Okay, very clean looking holes. Okay, so the holes look very clean, as clean as you can get concrete without washing it, I suppose. And then that's our stud. So 60 millimeter deep hole, 80 millimeter long stud. Hole looks a little deep. So I have no idea how much epoxy to try and, you know, make. Uh, but usually you want about two thirds of the hole. So we'll just see what happens. So if you're not familiar with this stuff, um, it's just two part epoxy, one part inside the other. Here's an old one. So you can see it's got the brown sort of mortary section on the inside there. Uh, I might use, try and use up the old stuff before I crack open the new one. Uh, but it should be good for this test because it hardens in like five minutes or so. Okay, so I've just gloved up because um, I don't want to put like grease and crap into the epoxy. You know, like everything it says, don't get it on your skin, but I mean, it doesn't hurt you. But uh, in this case, I just want to have, uh, you know, no contamination. All right, so that's the stuff, one part inside the other. The idea is you just sort of break off or cut off the amount you want. Just gonna get rid of that end. And then you just knead it together uh, quickly. Try and just make it into a sausage that'll fit into the hole. Let's do it. Ugh. She's starting to go off. Ah. Oh well, let's see how it goes. It's not in as deep as the others have been. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so it didn't actually harden in 10 minutes fully, so I left it uh, a couple of days. So anyway, let's pull them out, see how they go. Got the hydraulic thing. Let's do it. Okay, here's the ram all set up. Okay, loading. 13, 45, 45, 53, 54, 45, and it's out already, 55, 54, 45, so that's, I don't know, 60 or something like that. Not very strong. Okay, here's the second one. Right, 
Right, so that's the first one we put in. Uh, and then that's the second one we put in. So didn't really get full embedment with either of them. But uh, you know what? Ended up with just over 10 kilonewtons, just under 10 kilonewtons. So uh, I'm going to call this a partial success. <laughs> All right, well, there you go, guys. Kind of surprising. Well, actually, I wasn't sure what the hell was going to happen. But yeah, we ended up with about uh, 10 kilonewtons around for each of these, which is nowhere near as strong as proper uh, injection epoxy. So, you know, something like this. gets more like 40 kilonewtons. But then we weren't actually able to get uh, full embedment with these. This putty is just way too viscous, I guess. It's not even a fluid, really. Um, it's just way too hard to actually get that in there. Not gonna be the most practical in an emergency situation. Uh, it also didn't harden fully after 10 minutes. It's like, you know, the working time is 10 minutes, but to full fully harden, it said 60 minutes, but who the hell knows, really. Uh, I actually pulled this out, I think, two days later. But the main application I could see this particular trick being used for is uh, if you've got a concrete screw, if you've got concrete screws that you don't want to come undone, um, that's actually probably going to hold it in pretty well. Hilti has a fastening system like that. Not really sure what the point is other than um, vibration because concrete screws, strong as. Really, putting epoxy in there as well, it's not actually going to make the joint any stronger in tension, it's just going to make the screw harder to remove. So maybe in, you know, high vibration areas, something like that. I wasn't really doing this for any particular reason other than just interest. Whenever I use this putty stuff, I'm like, I wonder if you can use it to, to, to hold bolts in. Um, and yeah, it turns out you kind of can, but don't expect it to be very reliable. So I guess speculate less, experiment more. That's the takeaway from this. So anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, please. Do all that YouTube stuff. It really helps us out. And uh, yeah, scratches later.